Hi, it's Double O Pi, your undercover chemist here. Today, we're going to talk about how to calculate equilibrium constants when you don't know all the equilibrium concentrations in a reaction. This video assumes that you understand basic principles of equilibrium, but we're going to start off with a quick review of equilibrium constants. One of the important concepts in equilibrium is that a reaction can run both backwards and forwards but we're usually more interested in one direction than the other. Here we see a chemical equation with reactants capital A and capital B in red, which react to form the products in blue, capital C and capital D. There are also small letters in this chemical reaction, which refer to the stoichiometric coefficients of the reaction. So for example, we use small a moles of reactant capital A. To write the equilibrium constant for the reaction, we start with the concentrations of the products, so that's the concentration of C and the concentration of D, and each of these is raised to a power that reflects the stoichiometric coefficient. So we have the concentration of capital C raised to the small c power, and the concentration of capital D raised to the small d power. In the denominator of our fraction, we have the the reactants. So we have the concentration of capital A raised to the small a power and the concentration of capital B raised to the small b power. Okay, so let's look at what our equilibrium constant can tell us. If we have a lot of products at equilibrium, we're going to have very large concentrations for our products in the numerator of our fraction and we will, of course, end up with fewer reactants, so we'll have small concentrations in the denominator of our fraction. So if you have a big number on top of your fraction and you're dividing it by a small number, you end up with a large number. So a large value for your equilibrium constant tells you that at equilibrium, you have more products than reactants. Now what if the reverse is true, if you have more reactants than products? then you will have a large number in the denominator of your fraction because you have large concentrations of reactants and you will have small numbers in the concentrations of your products on the numerator of the fraction. So you're going to have a small number divided by a large number which overall gives us a small number for our equilibrium constant. So a small Kc value lets us know that we're going to have more reactants than products at equilibrium. So if you know all of the equilibrium concentrations for every species in your chemical reaction, then it's very easy to calculate the value of your equilibrium constant. So here's a very famous reaction, the Born-Haber reaction, which is used to create ammonia. We've got one mole of nitrogen gas reacting with three moles of hydrogen gas to make two moles of ammonia gas. And you can see the constant concentrations at equilibrium given below the chemical equation. So let's write an expression for the equilibrium constant. Okay, so we put our products on top. We only have one product that's this time, which is ammonia, but we're going to have the concentration of ammonia, and because the stoichiometric coefficient is 2, we're going to raise it to the second power. Then we have our reactants on bottom. So we have nitrogen gas, um, only one mole of that, so we have nitrogen raised to the first power. And we have hydrogen gas, and the stoichiometric coefficient there is three, and so that's raised to the third power. So there's our expression for the equilibrium constant. Now we're just going to take those concentrations, those equilibrium concentrations from the problem, and plug those into that expression. And you can see that if you run the calculation, that you would get an equilibrium constant value of 9.6. But we don't always know all of the equilibrium concentrations. Sometimes it's much easier to measure uh, some concentrations than others, and so we're only given one or two equilibrium concentrations. And so what this video is about is explaining to you 
how to work from initial concentrations and one equilibrium concentration and use that to calculate the value for the equilibrium constant. So that's much more complicated than the simple problem we just did. It has several steps. I'm going to walk you through them now and then we're going to apply them to a problem. So the first step is to make a table that shows all the reactants and the products. And we're going to write the concentrations that we know into our table, whether they be initial concentrations or equilibrium concentrations. We're then going to find a chemical species where we know both the initial and equilibrium concentrations, and we're going to calculate the concentration change that occurs during the reaction. Once we know that change for the one species, we can then calculate the other concentration changes using stoichiometric ratios. And we take those concentration changes and use them to calculate the unknown equilibrium concentrations that we were trying to find. Then once we have all of our equilibrium concentrations, we can plug them into our expression for the equilibrium constant and use that to calculate the value. So let's take those steps and apply them to an actual problem. So here's our reaction. We have iron 3 plus, ferric iron, and we're going to combine it in aqueous solution with the thiocyanate ion. Now in practice what, that, what happens when you do that is you create a colored complex of iron thiocyanate and this is because it is colored we can measure the concentration of that very easily. So we start out by making a solution where we know the concentrations of ferric iron, iron 3 plus ions, and thiocyanate ions that we put into the initial solution. So we know those initial concentrations. And then at equilibrium we can calculate our iron thiocyanate concentration and we need to be able to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So the first thing we do in step one is we're going to make a table showing all the products and the reactants. So I've done that here and you can see that we have our two reactants, uh, iron 3 plus and thiocyanate ion and then we have our iron thiocyanate complex, which is our product. And we have three rows in this table, which show the different sorts of concentrations that we want to find out about. We have our initial concentration, our concentration change, and our equilibrium concentration. So you can see the first letters there are I, C, E, and so we frequently call this an ice table. So our second step is to right in the concentrations that we know and we're going to get these directly from the problem. So you see that we have an initial iron 3 plus concentration of 2.4 times 10 to the 3 molar. Um, we have an initial thiocyanate ion concentration of 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And now we have two initial concentrations. Um, we don't have in the problem, we're not given a number for the initial concentration of iron thiocyanate. However, um, because we did not add it to our solution, we can assume that it is zero at the start. And now we can take our equilibrium concentration that we know, which is 9.8 times 10 to the minus fourth, and write that in the iron thiocyanate complex column. So we have four numbers in our table now and we need to find five more. Uh, step three is to calculate the concentration change for the species where you know both the initial and equilibrium concentrations. And you can see that for this particular problem what we know is we know both of those for iron thiocyanate complex. And the change is we're increasing from 0 to 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. So let's write that in. We're increasing, so we're going to put a plus. 
Now we're on to step four. We're going to take that change that we just calculated and use it to calculate the unknown concentration changes and we're going to do that with help from the stoichiometric ratios we get from our balanced chemical equation here. Um, so let's see, the first change that we don't know is we don't know the change in iron 3 plus concentration. So let's look at our stoichiometric ratios. For every one mole of iron thiocyanate that we make, we use one mole of iron 3 plus. So we are making 9.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. And in order to do that, we have to use up 9.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar of iron 3 plus. Now let's look at our thiocyanate ion. Again, we have a one-to-one -one ratio where for every one mole of complex we make, we use one mole of thiocyanate ion. So we made 9.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar of our complex, and we did that by using up 9.8 times 10 to the minus fourth molar of thiocyanate. Okay, so now we filled in the change row. Now let's look at the equilibrium concentrations, which we get to in step five. So in step five, we're going to calculate the unknown equilibrium concentrations, and we're going to do that by using our initial concentrations and our change in concentration. So we started uh, with 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 molar iron 3 plus, and we decreased that concentration by 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. So we're just going to subtract that. Likewise, we started with 1.9 times 10 to the minus 3 molar of thiocyanate, and we decreased it by 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4th molar. So, there are your concentrations, your equilibrium concentrations. Now that we have all of our equilibrium concentrations, we can go back and we can use that to calculate our equilibrium constant. So we're going to start by writing an expression for Kc. And again, what we're going to do here, we have our product concentration on top, just one, and raised to the first power. And then we have our two reactant concentrations on bottom. So now that we have an expression for equilibrium constant, we can take the numbers from our table, and we can plug them directly into that expression. And then if you run it through your calculator, you'll see that the answer we get is 760. So that is the equilibrium constant for this reaction. To get a little more practice, let's do one more problem. Here we're looking at a reaction that happens in the gaseous phase. We're taking gaseous carbon monoxide and combining it with two moles of hydrogen gas to form methanol gas. So you take a reaction vessel, and you're going to put in enough carbon monoxide to make 0.185 molar concentration, and you're going to add hydrogen gas until you reach a concentration of 0.224 molar. Now, at equilibrium, the concentration of methanol gas is 0.052 molar, and we want to calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So first, we're going to make our table. And this works just like before. We've got the three rows for the ice concentrations. And we have our two reactants, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. And we have methanol. Then the second step is to write in the concentrations that you know. Okay, So we're given three concentrations. And let's put them in our table. And once again, we don't have an initial concentration for our product, but we didn't put any in to start, so that must be zero. Now we're going to calculate the concentration change that we know using the species for which we have both an initial and an equilibrium concentration, which in this case is our product, methanol gas. So. We started with zero, and we ended with 0.052 molar. And so we have a change of plus 0.052 molar. 
let's look at step four. In step four, we're going to take that change and calculate the other concentration changes for our two reactants. So let's look at our stoichiometric ratios. Um, for carbon monoxide, we see that for every one mole of methanol that we make, we use up one mole of carbon monoxide. So we've created 0.052 molar of methanol, which means we used up, we decreased the amount of carbon monoxide by the same number, 0.052 molar. How about hydrogen gas? Here's where it's a little different from the last problem because now we, have, we don't have a one-to-one -one, uh, stoichiometric ratio. Instead, what we have is for every mole of methanol that we make, we use up two moles of hydrogen gas. So we made 0.052 molar of uh, methanol. Therefore, we must use up two times 0.052 or 0.104 moles of hydrogen gas. So now we filled in the change row. Let's go on and calculate the equilibrium concentrations. Okay, so once again here we're just going to subtract. We started with 0.185 molar of carbon monoxide. We decreased that amount by 0.052 moles, and so we get 0.133 molar. Okay, we started with 0.224 molar of hydrogen gas. We decreased that by 0.104 we end up with 0.120 molar. So let's take our equilibrium concentrations now and use them to calculate our equilibrium constant. First of all, of course, we have to write our expression for the equilibrium constant. Kc is going to be our concentration of product divided by the concentration of carbon monoxide times the concentration of hydrogen gas raised to the second power because it has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2. And let's take our equilibrium concentrations and put them into that expression. And that gives us a value of 27.2. Thank you for watching. Our next video will cover how to take your equilibrium constant and use it to calculate equilibrium concentrations. Thank you for watching.